So, many years ago, and I think coming up to about five years ago now, we looked at a distribution called Oracle Solaris. And today we're going to be looking at another Solaris distribution, and this is Open Indiana. And we're taking a look at it right now on the Linux Lounge. Indeed, here we are on the desktop of Open Indiana, and as you can see, it does look very much like Oracle Solaris. Now, I'm no Solaris expert, but this is what I gather. Open Indiana is based on Open Solaris, which is in turn based on Solaris itself, and Open Solaris was actually discontinued by Oracle, and this is sort of the continuation of that project. So I guess in a way it's an open source alternative to Oracle Solaris, as well as being very much its own thing. Now Solaris itself is a Unix-like operating system, so it should be kind of quite easy to get to grips with for anyone who's familiar with BSD, Linux, or another Unix-like operating system. Now, before we start looking at this, I have to say, in my last video I got criticism for reviewing a server OS as a desktop OS, which was fair. However, apparently this distribution is, from what I gather, a desktop operating system as well as a workstation one. And apparently it's supposed to be like Solaris's answer to Ubuntu, and I can confirm it was very easy to install and everything that you would need is included by default. Um, but with all of that said, let's just kind of go ahead and take a quick look at the OS. First things first, I have to say things do look very old school. But despite that, it is in fact very modern. It uses the Mate desktop out of the box, so if you want, you can install a more modern theme. As for applications, I have to say it's fairly bare bones, but at least it's not bloated, so let's go ahead and quickly take a look at them. In your accessories, you know, you get the usual Mate stuff. Education, you get LibreOffice, which actually I installed that, that's not installed by default. You get the Eye of Mate, LibreOffice, the usual Mate stuff. You get the Firefox web browser, Pigeon, Internet Messenger, Thunderbird, Tiger VNC viewer. Now the thing about Firefox is, this is a fairly new version. However, I have to say, it's the ESR version, which means it won't get updates nearly as often, but I suppose maybe that's easier on the development team, or possibly it's more stable. If we keep going, uh, we've of course, I've installed LibreOffice, you have a document viewer, and of course the Mate dictionary, you get Presero, a CD ripper, and that's about your lot, and then of course you get the Mate setting stuff. You also get Gparted, which is very handy, I know some Unix systems don't have that available. And in your system, you get all the usual stuff. Interestingly, Opening Jana comes with Compiz by default, so if you want all sorts of fancy effects, you can do that. It also apparently comes with the NVIDIA drivers by default, so if you use an NVIDIA graphics card, you're good to go. And in terms of applications, that's about it. But the one thing I should probably show you is LibreOffice, because this didn't come with it, I actually did install this. And that brings me to the main caveat with Open Indiana and other like Solaris-based systems. There isn't really that much software available. The stuff that is available seems to work. So for instance, LibreOffice here works absolutely fine. So if you want to use an Open Indiana computer for web browsing, email, and a bit of office work, that's going to be completely fine. But other than that, it's all a little bit bare bones. The only package that I would personally want that I was able to find in Open Indiana is LibreOffice, which does work very well, but sadly the lack of software sort of brings us to our conclusion. Open Indiana does seem like a nice operating system, but like many other small operating systems, it's very much limited by its software library. And I think as it stands, it's really more of a tinker toy for people who enjoy Unix-like operating systems, on the desktop anyway. And to be honest, if you want an alternative Unix-like operating system, I would probably recommend BSD if you don't want to use Linux. But with that said, Open Indiana and Solaris are both pretty cool, and if you enjoy Unix-like operating systems or Solaris, I would highly recommend that you give this a look. But with that said, that's just kind of my first quick look and first impressions. I thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.